Hello, everyone, and well, welcome to be here. I hope you're still awake because I know you might have heard multiple times about Axiom, BridgeHub, um, Asset Hub for multiple times today. I know you might be a little bit tired, but sorry, I will keep this conversation going. Please give me more patience about this. Um, my name is Tyrone, and I'm one of uh, product manager from Bifrost. And today, I will discuss about Bifrost cross-chain staking liquidity protocol, which is leveraged by Axiom. And if you know about CCIP, which launched by Chainlink, so you might have a, you know, the similar idea on the Bifrost cross-chain staking liquidity protocol, and the abbreviation is SLPX. OK, from the beginning, we will start with some multiple uh, notes uh, to, to get it further into deeply understanding of the SLPX protocol. So liquid staking actually rising recently, and we will start with some uh, concept and the background of the current statue of liquid staking. And then why Bifros is unique to encounter the challenges of liquid staking. And finally, we will have some deeply understanding about the logic behind and how to operate. And we will demonstrate one back end and one, one front end for the SLPX protocol. The LSD track is rising recently. So if you, might, you might be ha heard a new track uh, in the DeFi recently. So it is liquid staking derivative or liquid staking token, whatever you call it. But it's actually rising from since the Shapilla upgrade and it rises beyond taxes and lending in the DeFi track. So especially once you see that in the middle of April, Shapilla upgrade in Ethereum and we go and um, liquid staking increase into the top of the DeFi TVL in this track. So if we're thinking about the requirement from the clients, so we might know liquid staking is actually accelerating the whole TVL for a blockchain. On Ethereum, you might see there are many of liquid staking applications built on the asset of the LSD. So in the middle of May, which is the timeline that Lido, Rocket Pool, and more of the uh, liquid staking protocol started to accumulate more of the TVL inside of liquid staking. There are many use cases, something like um, restaking, um, dedicated AMM for liquid staking like Marvel Rake, and uh, Pendo, which is doing like uh, interest trade and indexes for NCs. If we make a comparison between Polkadot and Ethereum and other blockchains, we might find out Polkadot might have more potentially to be built more of use cases and applications upon an LSD. Um, the LSD penetrability means the penetration of the liquid staking takes in account of the proof of staking. So for example, we take the example on Ethereum. So Ethereum has about 45 billion in proof of staking, which includes 37 liquid staking penetration inside of it. For Polkadot, we have 9.3 percentage of liquid staking and with a relatively higher staking APY. If we compare to BSC, Cosmos, Solana, and Avalanche, you might find Polkadot is more potentially to build more of applications and expand the penetration among these different blockchains. Of course, it includes Ethereum. So the question is, how can we increase the penetration among different chains by liquid staking? especially utilizing the XEM. So this is the main topic that we'll discuss today. Yet the question is, how does Bifros increase LSD penetration by the XEM? I listed some of um, 
LSD from light on a rocket pole to compare with the advantages of biofuels it has by using the XCM. So standardization we start with. The most attracted way of XCM is that it makes standardization for message passing between different power chains. For bifrost, we can easily leverage this advantage to expand liquid staking to more to multiple chains to increase the penetration of liquid staking. By using the XCM, which makes the whole process more transparency and decentralization, and we can easily make possible to let other power chains to remotely call the functions of liquid staking on Bifrost. So, for example, if you are used on Moonbeam or ASTAR or other power chains, you are able to just directly mint a V dot, a mint dot liquid staking derivative on the remotely. Liquid aggregation means we support remotely swap on a, on a source chain, so the users won't have to come to Bifrost, but they can remotely mint or swap in a dedicated uh, liquid staking pool. So we call it you know, the liquidity gateway or liquidity aggregation in a pool. So we don't have to separate the liquidity all over the other blockchains. Beside that, we have some interesting functions like liquid staking, LSD can be used as governance usage in the source chain. VDOT, take an example, VDOT can be used for dot staking and dot vault in open governance. So that's the case how LSD works on Bifrost. And how we staking one is provide a user with experience in just stake all the different LSD in only one spot. And, and any LSDs can be, can be set as the gas fee on Bifrost. We named the model like headquarter plus branches. It's basically like um, we are seeing Bifrost chain is a terminal of all the different liquid stakings. And the Bifrost can easily connect with different power chains and outside of external blockchains via the asset hub and the bridge hub. It lets, it, it lets us very easily to, to just remotely mint V tokens and connect with external blockchains via the XEM. So that's why the narrow is bit direction. By using this module, the headquarter Bifrost have the authority to, uh, to generate a liquid staking token and swap function and redeem function, but we don't, we don't need to leave authority of, of LSD minting on the source chain, so which makes stuff, which make us security on, on the uh, multi-chain deployment. From this simple logic, we can see here is the uh, bridge hub, which connect with any other external blockchains, and the connect with the uh, bridge hub, which also we can leverage by XCM to connect any LSDs in any chain. That's why we name it a protocol to allow any chain to use any LSD. I will explain more about this in the demonstration. Yeah, we come to the come to the part how it works. Basically, on um, Bifrost SLPX, this is the um, I mean basic logic and you know, how it works. So we separated on a source chain, which is the branch uh, contract that we deployed on Moonbeam, and the Bifrost is the term is the terminal to execute all the transaction in one spot. So users requires to mint liquid staking token on Moonbeam and they are actually calling the SLPX contract, the branch contract on Moonbeam, and the contract will adjust the XCM calling to Bifrost SLPX palette. The palette will, will interact with liquid staking protocol to mint liquid staking token and get it back to the user on Moonbeam. So this whole transaction is in 
um, two batches, and with XCM v3, we can easily query the result of each transaction if it succeeds or failed. Hence, the, the whole procedure is fully, tr fully tr uh, transparency. And this is the interesting case that we did a month before with Hydrodex. Hydrodex playing as the role of user by using their treasury to mint their dot in the treasury to V dot by XCM through the SLPX uh, module. Here we come from uh, come come from some uh, sim a sample about SLPX palette on Bifrost. Here are some uh, important parameters about uh, how we execute the logic on A star and Moonbeam. This is this part is kind of like um, sorry, it's part of kind of like uh, how you know how how Hadrodex works and how Moonbeam works. The, how the, uh, the contract works on the source chain. The parameters which include uh, where is the source chain um, and the currency ID is something like if you want to mint the dot to v dot, the currency ID is dot, and the target chain with some remark if needed. And about XEM transaction, where is the destination trans to, and how users can receive that V token. Um, on a destination chain. OK, on a simple way, we can just directly go into the demo right here, so it would be clear. And this demo is playing like um, uh, how it works on the Bifrost set, how the SLPX palette works on Bifrost. And this is the environment that we deployed on ASTAR. So this is the contract with different functions to call Bifrost. We can see the wallet with A star. And here is the amount we put it into to mint a V A star on the A star environment through Bifrost SLPX contract. So we put in the value. And we check the parameters to mint asset. So that's 10 A star in order to mint 10 V A star. I'm just waiting for the uh, transaction to be executed by the XEM. All right, and we go to Bifrost Poker, the local test net, so we can check the chance back if the transaction is succeed. So the XEM actually transact to mint the V dot on Bifrost. And we switch to A star testnet. We can see the transaction actually issued VA star on, on A star set. So the underlying logic is Bifrost transfer the V token via the XEM to A star. So A star have a wrapped version of VA star on the transaction. All right, so we go back to check our wallet and just waiting for the reloading of, uh, of the wallet so we can see the result right there. All right, it comes. So 10 plus with A star in my wallet. And next step is for testing a redemption to initiate from A star environment via Bifrost and get it back to A star. So we put in the VA star address, which is the asset address that we, uh, that we receive. We can uh, just uh, jump a little bit for transaction execute. OK, transaction executed. And there's minus of 10 VA stuff from my wallet. 
Yeah, once again, we come to Bifrost and see the transaction result. Yeah, there is the issue of um, XEM redeem of the VA star on Bifrost, and now is transacting to A star. If, we, if you check the event, you can find out A star has been re already redeemed from the A star environment. And finally, is the uh, most interesting part is remotely swap on A star to s to swap a token on A star inside of the liquidity on Bifrost. So that's that's I previously mentioned how we aggregate all the liquidity on Bifrost, but support remotely swap on a destination source chain. So we put in the asset what we want to swap and uh, and the, and the asset that we can receive. Okay, transaction made it. And once again, we check the event on uh, Bifrost, so which shows the currency ID A is VA star, uh, uh, is A star swapped to VA star on Bifrost. This is the liquidity on Bifrost. And check if we have received the VA star on A star network. Yes, we did. So that's a remotely swap. OK, we received that in, in our wallet. So yeah, that's a demonstration for the back end. Yeah, if we back to our presentation, um, we have seen some benefits on Bifrost SLPX contract can be deployed on uh, any EVM or WASM ecosystem. If we just uh, take a brief introduce about this logic, we can just start from this part. So the purple one, who is connected with the bridge hub. These are external blockchains, and we deploy the branch contract on this chain so they can remotely call the Bifrost via the bridge hub. And this is the B direction, definitely. So the logic is kind of like initiate the requirement from the external chain and it goes through uh, Bridge Hub to Bifrost. And we receive that, and we send tokens back to the uh, external chain. For those bidirection uh, lines connect with different external chain, meaning some you know, third party or external bridge connect with them. So the veto can, can also be easily um, to flaws among these multiple chains. And this is a um, hackathon team that they built something interesting up on the SLPX contract. So um, they used a, a bridge which name is Squad, and uh, it can easily swap any ERC20 token from Polygon, uh, Moonbeam, uh, Avalanche, Ethereum, just directly swap it via a bridge to uh, to Glimmer, and the Glimmer can be easily minted to V Glimmer on the Bifrost set. So, on this part is actually the transaction via the XEM. And finally, we have uh, another demonstration about uh, uh, inter the interface of SLPX that we deployed on 
Ethereum, Moonbeam, Filecoin, so which means you can definitely mint any of the liquid staking token on any chain. And this is the case that we uh, start with how to stake your DOT on the Moonbeam environment. First, you need to crawl some DOT from Moonbeam to, to uh, from the relay to Moonbeam. So this is actually the demo on uh, uh, how to do it. Oh. The Moonbeam app, and we sign the transaction. So we're waiting for the finalize of the cross chain. All right, which means we have some dot to operate on Moonbeam to mean some V dot right there. And we sign the contract, assign the transaction. Here we can see we have minted V dot, staked the dot on Moonbeam. On the right side, we can see there's a select of network. So we will support different multiple V tokens and token staking on the list of different networks. So it is how the SLPX works on the interface. All right, I think I've done my introduction for Bifrost SLPX. So if you have any more questions, you can just directly contact me. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. Thank you. OK, we have five minutes for questions. If anyone has any questions, yep. Hi. Um, so when you mint a V token on, let's say, Astar EVM, mm -hmm. so uh, you use precompile XCM precompile on Astar to send uh, this message to the uh, your chain. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. So the contract has automatically order from from users. So. Uh, the contract can easily call the XEM transaction to Bifrost, and and the Bifrost have authority to mint the V token on Bifrost. So this is why we call it, you know, the headquarter is Bifrost, and the branch contract we deployed on the uh, whatever is iStar or Moonbeam. So it's a kind of a remote, remotely minting redemption and swap to Bifrost. How do you create an uh, APY when once the token V token is on uh, on buy first? How do you create um, rewards? Uh, it's something like we just directly staked via the XEM to the Polkadot relay. So I mean the staking is comes from I mean the staking APY is come from the Polkadot relay, but we have a mechanism to. Um, to, to automatically select validators on Polkadot. It depends on the score, which is from the history of their behaviors and, uh, and, the, and the averagely uh, staking API of each validator. So it's um, totally decentralized select from Bifrost set. So I mean, the staking is actually underlyingly staking on the Polkadot relay. OK. OK, uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you. We will start our next session in five minutes. So I hope I'll see you soon.